everybody. This is Heard It Now. I'm Naomi. My name is Aaron. Today we're going to be doing our albums of the year. Before this channel started, we, along with you guys, listened to a lot of the great albums that were released this year. And pretty much we're going to go back and forth, 10 through 1, and count down our top 10 albums of the year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We might have a lot of similar albums. We have very, pretty similar tastes in music. Yeah. At least as of 2018. But just don't be surprised if we have some of the same albums. The rankings might be different. So it's just going to be exciting for us to kind of go back and try to organize our thoughts as to what we thought was the best albums of 2018. We're just going to start off this list and now I'm just going to present her number 10. So, Anderson Pack, Oxnard. I really enjoyed that album. I like it as a whole. I feel like he, it was pretty complete thought. I just couldn't get over those uh, slight Jamaican accents, the fake Jamaican accents. From Dre? Yeah, like just, it's, just the songs are still good, and it's kind of like you know the dude doesn't have that. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, I there's a lot more music that I enjoyed, and I wish that I mm. could have added to this. Like, it, I don't even think that this is bad for me. Like, you know, there's so many albums that I actually might have enjoyed and might have put in. But for it to make it, I mean, I feel like that's pretty. Yeah. You should be honored. <laughs> you should be honored. Anderson Pack, you know, you know, you, you got Pitchfork, you know, you got reviews from, you know, Complex and you know Rolling Stone and probably the biggest music. No, you got Nene. Are, yeah, look, it didn't matter until now. So she put you in your top ten. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Nene. Yo, my. Number 10 is No Name with Room 25. Uh, I think she was lyrically potent as usual on her album. Some of her lines stood out, like being an insomnia black and about eating Chick-fil-A, mm. you know, in the dark and, you know, being being a hypocrite. Just things like that, just like little lines. I think that was in the same song that was in the first song. But a new sound for her that wasn't present in the previous track, she had a little bit more grittiness. She had a little bit more like streetwise to her, and it wasn't as charming as the first mixtape that she dropped, Telephone. But it was like a little bit more of a mature no name, and I really appreciated her output this year. It's Room Twenty Five, great album. So my number nine is Vince Staples FM. I really, really enjoyed a lot of the tracks on this album. I can't say that I enjoyed all of them. One of my favorite songs of the year is Fun. I love that song. I could listen to that song every day. It's great. So, yeah. My number nine is J. Cole with K.O.D. Now, J. Cole flexes his lyrical ability on this album once again. I hold his lyricism to high regard. And maybe for me, it's just not as adventurous of an album in terms of uh, styles. Definitely like J. Cole's take on pop. Nothing new per se. It's just he does what he does so freaking good that it's just hard to ignore. And when he releases an album that year, he's probably gonna be in the conversation for top 10 or top 15, top 20 rap albums of the year because he's just a potent rapper. It's not even just on this album, we are ranking the best albums, but even consider the dude's features this year, like even off D's or with Boz. Like the dude just goes insane. As well as being a rap record, this album was a good pop record. So, it's number eight for me, J. Cole, K.O.D. I really, really enjoyed like the songs that you had mentioned, K.O.D., ATM, Kevin's Heart. I feel like he had a lot of like those interludes, the outros for that, like for those songs that were thrown in at the end and in the beginning and the middle. <laughs> ones that you call bangers are those ones that you mentioned. Number eight, Anderson Pack, Oxnard. Just one of the more exciting albums that was released this year for me. I mean, just in terms of the ability to combine so many different styles not just into the same album, but literally into the same song at times. I really enjoyed this album pretty much from top to bottom. There was only like maybe one or two tracks I'd skip. Surprisingly, the song Tint with Kendrick Lamar wasn't even one of my favorites, you know, but I mean, from Head Low to Who Are You, Six Summers, I mean, I can go on and on. There was Mansa Musa, 
there was this pretty hefty list of tracks here that I come away from really enjoying. We have a first reaction of this, so if you want to go down to the link in the description and view this, you'll see that, I mean, both of us really enjoyed a lot of this album. It was just a really potent album with really great features. The actual sound quality was amazing. My number seven album of the year is Saba, Care For Me. Because I care for you, Saba. <laughs> I really do, man. You're my homie. Favorite songs on the album probably is Life. Mm. That one, that song, I don't even think it hit me how it did maybe like the second or third time that I listened to it by myself. Because I think we listened to the album together the first time. And I don't think I even caught it. Psst. Huh. That song gets you. Oh, Busy Sirens. When we first heard that song, it's a longer song, but it sounds like two different songs. Mm. The change up in that is amazing. So that song is like when I was like, who is this dude? I wasn't like that into his music. I liked his music, but I don't feel like I. Like this album for me really made me like, wow, oh, Saba. This album made me just maybe appreciate the guy a little bit more. Like, he, you know, like he's human, you feel like, you know, you can feel his pain. My number seven is Brockhampton, Iridescence. Brockhampton released a great project in 2018, uh, primarily led by the, their strongest songs on the album, New Orleans, one of my favorites, uh, J. Overe, and District. The songs that are highlights for me are such highlights. Like, those are probably some of my songs of the year. The tracks that I consider highlights are just such huge, glowing, asteroid-sized highlights that I just can't really ignore it and can't really place it any lower. Definitely know how you feel. There's some albums for me that I feel the same way about, so. Right. Number six on my list is Smino. Nor. And I say it like that because I feel like it might be higher. Mm -hmm. I just, I... I don't know. This okay. is hard. I don't know if I enjoyed it when I listened to it, only because it was so long. <laughs> <laughs> so by the end of it, I felt like I had watched a movie. Uh, and they're not like one and a half, two minute tracks. No. He definitely puts out his whole life story. But it's great. It really is. It was a great album. One of my highlights. The songs are fun. Like music that'll put you in a good mood if you're just having a shitty day you could throw Smino on and he'll make you feel different you know like it can just take you out of a mindset maybe because his music is so catchy you know you can sing along to it and like the beats you got Monte number six Ski Mask The Slump God Stokely I fucking love the hell of this album and I'm gonna say that about every album on my top ten but you know this album Man, you know, and you can check out our first review, you know, like me and you, super jazzed about it, gave it super high scores. It was honestly great first listen material, and we return to the songs still. I mean, La La, Foot Fungus, Nuketown, that threesome right there. I actually, and I enjoyed songs like even Get Geeked and Reborn Rebel, Fossa Failure, Cat Pissed. I enjoyed all these songs. Some people hate on them, some people love them like we do. We're probably gonna rate it higher than just about anywhere else you're gonna see. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's how much we really had we really a connection to this album. It was punk rock and I'm all about that. So with that being said, it's my number five album of the year. I loved this album i even was trying to get my niece listening to it and her friends and i was telling like seriously fucking promoting the slump god like the next day after i heard and reviewed this damn album like loved it loved it loved it number five vince staples fm fantastic album i'm a huge vince staples fan i love his previous album crabs in the bucket i was expecting similar sounds to come with a new project. He didn't deliver on that end, but it's okay. Surprise is okay. And he surprised me, but with tracks like Feels Like Summer, Don't Get Chipped, Relay, Run the Band, Fun, and even Tweaking, I was digging it from top to bottom pretty much. And a little oral snippet, it was really exciting. 
that was previous to Earl's full length album dropping. So I had a little bit of excitement at the time that it dropped. And it ranked this high just because of returnability. I mean, on first listen, I probably wouldn't have even given it that high of a score. Yeah. For me, it grew on me. Peggy, JPEG Mafia with Veteran coming in at my number four. I really, really enjoyed some of the tracks on this album. The other ones I like. Um, but I really love songs like Thug Tears, Damn, Baby I'm Bleeding. There's a couple more that I won't say. <laughs> you get a track number two? Yeah, track number two. <laughs> I feel like this is an album that you can listen to when you're upset and just fucking, it'll change everything. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, it just, you can get so distracted in all the different beats and his screaming and it's so different. I think I go so hard. It's crazy. I love it. Number four, Kelly Uchis with her album Isolation. This album was the pop album for me this year. I mean, there's a lot of tracks that you'll hear on the radio that will get a lot more airplay. There's a lot of tracks that will feature even more modern instrumentation. There's more tracks that you'll hear that are pushing more boundaries. But there will, in my opinion, not be an album that's as consistent from top to bottom with solid songwriting. Even the lyrics are very underrated in the sense that they are, she's good at telling a story. She doesn't say stories. There's not a stupid line in there, in my opinion. There's not that many stupid lines in this album. Like, she doesn't actually get as much credit for being as good of a lyricist as she actually is. She's really good at making simplistic, relatable lyrics. And her melodies were on point. Almost every single track, you're just like, like, just perfect. And her features, she couldn't have literally a better cast in her album. From Tyler the Creator to Steve Lacey from the internet. I mean, you can't get much better than that. Booty Collins, fantastic, fantastic album. George Smith. And so my number three album of the year is Denzel Curry's Taboo. I love some of the songs on here, like Sumo. God, that song is so fucking hard. That is like... Black Balloons mm. really grew on me. Um, I don't know. There's just something about that song. Mm. It's, it's really catchy. Taboo. Those are like, m- I would say, like my favorites on this album. Number three, Jid with DiCaprio 2. I mean, you saw our first reaction review, and if you didn't, please go down in the description and click that link. Amazing, amazing album. Banger after banger. And the ones that weren't bangers were absolutely introspective with beautiful instrumentation and jid flowed like nobody else in the rap game right now. The dude is unbelievably lyrical. The amount of clever, clever, clever lines after clever line after punchline after punchline. He made one of the best albums of 2018 and one of the best rap albums I've heard in a long time, period. I so agree with you. <laughs> This comes in for my number two. This is like where I think that I don't dislike any song on the album. Like this is the albums were at the point where I start not skipping and just like really enjoy almost every single song on this damn album. And we've been huge fans of him from the Mm -hmm. beginning. I don't Mm -hmm. know if that's what it is. We're just like craving it and you know it's so great like he actually did put out such a good album that we're just he's like up here for us you know so high Mm. out of frame that you can't even see (laughs) he's it's just it's great coming in number two for me denzel curry taboo for you rap fans if you're familiar with denzel curry this is like a no-brainer to include him in your top 10 your top five maybe even your top three because this was an amazing album. One of the most fire blazing, like world dominating rap records of the year. And what I mean by that is 
I don't just mean to throw out words flippantly. What I mean is the dude literally flows like his throat alone is going to take over everybody and control their minds. Like, he's just so aggressively, strongly opinionated, and he presents himself so confidently. Like, it's absolutely infectious. He comes at every single beat with such harshness, with such, like, guttural explosion. Like, it just feels like it's just coming from inside, and it's just kind of like vomiting up rage and chaos. Ah, it's beautiful, beautiful, beautifully chaotic album, and I literally can rank every single track I like, and it's probably going to be almost a full album. I mean, Black Balloon, Cash Maniac, Sumo, Switch It Up, Sirens, Cloud Cobain, Perks, Vengeance, and Black Metal Terrace. Mm -hmm. I mean, just amazing, amazing track, amazing, amazing album. I love it. I hope you loved it as much as I did. Denzel Curry's Taboo, number two for me. So, my number one is Caliuchis. The reason why I say that is because... Maybe it's because I've had time to really digest this album, but I literally know every song verbatim. Mm. I The Spanish ones, the English ones, the Spanglish ones, I know them all. And I can listen to this album almost like at any time of the day. And it's cool with me, and I am, like, I love this album. Maybe it hits a special place, you know, just the time that I heard it, all of it, just the way that it was introduced to me, mm. all of it. Um, I really enjoyed this album, so, yeah, it's my number one. It's awesome. Yeah. It's a good pick. Number one, JPEG Mafia veteran yeah this album is my number one i i don't think i'm going to try to make an argument as to why i think it's competitively better than any other album for me this is totally about just my absolute favorite my absolute love of his creative spirit and what he put into this album and the kind of output that came out it was like speaking spirit animal to spirit animal or something it was strange you know just like when i heard it i'm like it was so bizarre the kind of connection i had with the music and with this artist i never heard of his music before and so definitely spinning on this album and push and play i was not expecting to be put into this kind of journey it's absolutely chaotic it speaks to truth for the sake of honesty for the sake of your glitchy ass beats just for the song baby i'm bleeding maybe my favorite track of 2018 ah oh, man it was a fantastic album i i love yeah i just love this album so it's my number one album 2018 jpeg mafia is better if there's any artists out there that are watching this here's a message to y'all don't fucking release your album fucking at the end of December. <laughs> Let people fucking process that shit, man. Yeah. There's so many albums that I just wish I could just process just a little bit longer. It's yeah, you put a lot of pressure on her for her best dev list, all right? Really? Doing this. Like, You've obviously upset her, so please take that into account, all rappers out there. Stop pissing off Naomi. Just artists in general. Yeah. Not just rappers, artists. I, yeah, I, I, release your albums earlier. Give Naomi a chance like, to process like, your There should be a damn cutoff albums. if you want to make it to people's best of list. Yeah, if you want to make it to Naomi's best of, you better release that yeah, album. You're not going to make that fucking cutoff. Before list. December 12th. So. <laughs> <laughs> now that she's had that rant, you know, 2018 was an amazing year for music. I mean, I genuinely mean that. I, I mean, I don't even know what's going to come in 2019. I mean, that's how unpredictable 2018 was. Literally, you had so many flavors and so many different personalities, so many different takes on what good art is. And so I'm just excited for 2019. Let's get it started. Hopefully, you subscribe to us. That way, you can see all our reactions. To see. All our oh, crazy to all, Right, to all these great albums that are going to be coming out in <laughs> 2019 because we're definitely going to be there to cover them. Yeah. See you in 2019. Yeah. Please hit the subscribe button. Please hit that like button. And please go down in the comments and share what you thought were your best albums of 2018. And hey, maybe, who knows, maybe you agreed with one of us. <laughs> All right. Who knows, right? Bye, everybody.